Hey everyone, hope you guys are having a great night tonight. Um, if you're watching this sometime during the day uh, or afternoon, ask that. Hope you're having a good day. Uh, tonight we're going to be interviewing Seth Rogers. Um, Beasley, very respectful in the chat. You know, he's going through a lot. Uh, before I do that, I has been brought to my attention that I am terrible at promoting anything that, that I do. So please, if you are on YouTube uh, watching this, please hit that subscribe button. Also, if you want to for merch, um, I wrote a couple books, uh, children's books. One is called right here, Boundaries, and the other one, which is coming out soon, is called Surprises Are Okay, Secrets Are Not, which basically teaches kids that you should not be keep, keeping secrets for adults. And both of those can be ordered from that website, and you can pre-order the other one along with merch, find the podcast, um, et cetera. So before I bring Seth on, I want to talk a couple things that have happened since you know we scheduled this, this live. Seth, I'm sure a lot of y'all have seen by now. If not, I'll tell you, uh, did an episode with Nancy Grace. Uh, and one of those things that came up during that interview is the fact, if you haven't seen it yet, is that Nancy Grace uh, offered Chris Proudfoot a interview, or sorry, not an interview, Chris offered Chris Proudfoot a lie detector, a polygraph, which on air he said he would take. And then when came time to take it, Nancy Grace jumped through all the hoops to make that happen. He said that the TBI told him that he can't take it, which I'm just going to say I call BS on, on that one right now. Um, before tonight, I, I've, I've been out there. I was with one of the search days that Seth was out there. I was not with his team, but I was with another team that was out there. And I'm going to tell you what, this man is, is an absolute trooper. He, he hurt himself and he kept going. He is living on very little sleep. I don't know how he's running other than probably just pure adrenaline at this point. Um, so anyways, without further ado, let's bring him on and we'll start, uh, talking, talking some questions. Hey Seth, how's it going? Don't, yeah, it's going. Yeah, I know. Yeah. We well, don't have to do the pleasantries on that. I know it's not going well for you. This is, we're over a month of you not having any rest, right? Um, constant interviews, constant everything. Constant, constant something. I don't know what it is, but I don't wish it upon anybody. No, you're, what you're going through is a parent's absolute worst nightmare. Uh, before we get started, I don't think you need any introduction, obviously, but before we get started on questions and things like that about Sebastian, uh, who this is really about, is there anything that you want to say to the people before we start? Thank you. Thank you, all those that are helping me find my son. Thank you for everybody who's so, showing up to search. Thank you, everybody who's putting out flyers, even where they live. Every little piece helps. I want my son's name and face plastered everywhere. And if somebody out there is, is watching this and you have my file, he's mine. I need you to just drop him off at an open gas station and tell him to go inside and tell him who he is. And tell him to call 911. Yeah, See, back, one of the one of the questions I was going to ask you later, but let's go ahead and get this one out of the way because it goes with what you're saying. Other than what you just said, is there any other message that you would like to convey to anyone uh, who might have information about Sebastian's whereabouts? Anything that you want to say to them at all outside of what you just said? Show up. They email me. There are pe there are there are people on Facebook that for all these sites send it to them. You know, there's there's Miss Terry Lynn. She has a podcast. She's she wants people to send her tips. If you're local and you have a tip, come by where we gather before we go out to search. Uh, I live in Clarksville. You know, you'll find me. My truck's pretty easy to 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 make. I mean, there are people. Even if you want to call where I work, call. And, and they probably won't like this, but call Davidson Sheriff's, Davidson County Sheriff's Department. Tell them that you have a tip. They'll get it to me. I'm pretty sure I've gotten a lot of support from Davidson County. Yeah, I'm positive they would get it to you. And, and at the same time, you know, if, if it comes up and you guys need to get a tip to somebody, you can reach out to me. You can reach out to Pascal. You can reach out to anybody that has anything. For me, out of all the cases that we've talked about, this one really hits me hard because I am local. I live in Sumner County. It is very, very close for me. This is my community. Um, the, you know, 
Sebastian is, is my neighbor. It, it, and even though you're in Clarksville, you are too. Although getting from here to Clarksville, there's not a straight shot. But, you that's know, this is – do what? I said that's because of 24. Yeah, I know that's because of 24. They could make a, a thing, but they haven't. But that's <laughs> that's a different discussion on a different day. Um, like a bypass. But this is my community. And so what I want to say is they are out there searching every day. This is, you know, a lot of volunteers – uh, have come forward. They still need things, which we'll talk about more. But if you are local, if you are in the Nashville area, you can devote some time. Um, you know, please, please, you know, come out and search, you know, drop off supplies. They're do are they still doing uh, supplies over by off volunteer drive? Um, no, we are at one, one twenty seven river road, uh, Hendersonville, Tennessee, it's over by the Rudder, which is a restaurant okay. on the, the water. Yeah, Rudder's the south part of Hendersonville, guys. Pretty easy to find. So if, if is that was it where that place we were searching that one day where I met you out there, where the building was? Okay, yes. so yeah, you go down like you're going to the Rudder, and you just don't quite go that far. And, and anyways, putting a GPS, but they need supplies. What what do you need at this point from supply standpoint? Obviously, water, food, snacks. Um, water is 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 great, but we need we need eyes. We need we need people. Um, we need people. We need people to come together as a community. This is a fifteen year old child that that doesn't deserve what has happened to him to have happened to him. Yeah, I agree with you. And he's a special needs child, uh, which makes it that much that much more. And so, yeah, if you guys are out, I know that we have, I look, I know that this live was posted in a lot of uh, Sebastian Rogers groups and a lot of local Hendersonville groups. If you are local, please find some time to come out and search. You know, it doesn't have to be a formal thing. You can come a little bit later. You can come a little bit earlier. You know, they are, you know, you can organize your own independent search. Uh, there are maps of where they've gone. You know, if you do live in the area, you know, and you have property, because with Hendersonville, as you know, Madison, Goodlitzville, Gallatin, there are some people that have pretty large plots of land. If you have one with, with anything on it from water to, you know, wells to caves to any places where he could hide or, or, or be stashed, um, please check. And, and like law enforcement said in the press conference yesterday, if you're afraid to go do it yourself, you don't want to do it by yourself, call them. They said that they will come out and help you search. So that being said, you know, let's, Let's start here because this is about Sebastian, right? And we've had a lot of people ask a lot of things about Sebastian, but we don't know a lot about him. So if you don't mind, um, how would you describe him as a person, as your son? What, have her, what are some of his passions, some of his interests? Oh, boy, he loves video games. Um, I, think, I think it's more like a, a close toss-up between animals and video games. Uh, when it comes to animals, he loves cats. Like the boy just loves cats. He loves cats. I mean, like if he sees a stray cat, he he's he's apt to walk up. Uh, why is it running from me? Well, son, it's a cat. Um, trying to explain that to him, it, you know, and not. I mean, my son got bit in the face by by a dog, and he had to have seven stitches in his face. And he still isn't scared of dogs. I mean, he's not scared of anything. Except for, I guess, his stepfather. That's fair. What are, what are some of the memories, like your favorite memories that you have with him? What stands out uh, to you as a dad? I know that you have a great relationship with your son. Uh, what are some of the things that you guys like to do together? Well, I think one of the one of the favorite things that he likes to do with me is road trips. Me personally, I'm not a fan of road trips because he <laughs> refuses to drive. Okay. If he were to drive some, you know, that'd be great, but I can't even get him to sit behind the wheel in the vehicle stationary, but he likes to go on road trips with me. He likes it when I take him to go. I mean, he was born in Georgia. We moved to Kansas while his mother was at great mistakes. And then she got stationed in San Diego. And so we drove to San Diego. And then she would leave on a deployment or a half a deployment, a third of a deployment. And we would leave the house. We'd pack everything that we were going to need into the car. 
and we would drive. We'd go see family. He has been coast to coast probably six times. I mean, boy loves road trips. To me, they're educational because never a road trip is never the same. You always can take a different route and see different things. And he loved it. He liked when Christmas came around or summer break. If I could get it off, road trip. We'd go down in Texas to see his grandma and his grandpa. You know, drive. there's multiple different ways to get there. Drive through Missouri into Oklahoma, stop and see friends on the way. That I think that's one of his favorite things to do with me is road trips. Because also at the at the end of road trips or in the middle of road trips, there's going to fish. Uh, when my when my mom and dad, his grandparents, lived down in in South Texas, we'd go down there and go fish in the Gulf of Mexico. Boy, loved that. I mean, there was nothing like going on the boat to go fishing. You know, he got to see baby hammerhead sharks. One of the people caught one of those little. Little eleven inch hammerhead shark, and he was like, "Dad, it's a shark." And I'm like, <laughs> "It is. Can we keep it? No. Can we eat it? No, son. If for in order for it to be big enough to to eat, it, it'd be big enough to eat you. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> all the jellyfish yeah. and stuff that w- were in the water. I mean, he's inquisitive. He's always been inquisitive. He likes to." He likes to ask the questions because he wants to know the answers. He wants to know more and more. And it's like, I'm a wealth of information, son. You want to know things? Ask me. You know, I like sharing my knowledge with him. He's my mini me. What? 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 Did he have a favorite place that he liked to go when you guys road tripped? He liked to go see his mom and uh, well, my mom and dad. I mean, he liked. So they have. Texas. Yeah, he liked. He likes dogs, and they have dogs. They have a little Boston pit, and he, you know, they like him. He liked them. He was so heartbreaking when, when one of them passed on. But, you know, he enjoyed it. He enjoyed seeing family. He enjoyed the trip. He enjoyed the experience of it, I believe. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, I'm, you're wearing, I see, I, I'm wearing green, you can barely tell, but um, the shirt that you're wearing, can you show people that for a second? So this shirt right here um, for Sebastian, you can get a shirt similar to, I think it's one similar to what you have on. Um, if you see what I have scrolling down here at the bottom, uh, it's bonfire.com slash Sebastian dash Rogers. You can get one of those. And at the same time, um, I put uh, Seth's cash app up here. You can see it too. So if you want to donate to the cause to help with searches, look guys, I'm going to tell you right now, this man has been out there every single day. He does not sleep. He does not eat. He's definitely not taking care of himself. Um, uh, and searches are expensive. He's not working right now because he's taking the time off to find his son. So if anybody has anything, if everybody between all the platforms that are streaming this right now went to that cash app and donated just a dollar, it would make a tremendous difference for him. Um, there was something that you said a little while ago. Um, and you know, you know that we talked about this beforehand, and I don't want to talk too much about your your ex and his stepfather. We, I want to keep that to a bare minimum because this is about you, this is about Sebastian and about you because you're the one that's out there every day doing things. Um, but you had said a second ago that he was afraid of his of his stepdad. Is there what has he conveyed to you or talked to you about that you are able to talk about why he was afraid of him? I found out afterwards. I mean, I found out out after after my son disappeared that. He was scared of his stepfather. I mean, I've I've seen some of the podcasts where he has used the belt. I mean, if you think about the the if you I've been to the school, I've talked to the principal, I've talked to his teachers, I've talked to the SRO, and everybody is like, he's a wonderful kid. You know, he's always happy here. He always wants to make sure. As, as the SRO told me, he saw him every day. And the SRO was like, it was the same thing every day with him. 
he would stop the SRO and be like, how many tickets are you going to give the teacher today? <laughs> you know? And it's he would, funny. I like to think that he got that from me. I have a sense of humor. You do have a sense of humor. Even through all this, you have a pretty damn good sense of humor, I think. Well, there's been people that say that when my sense of humor is gone, the world's probably going to end. But, uh, you know, yeah, he's he's got a sense of humor. And everybody at the school was like, they're wanting him to come back. It's not just me. I mean, he has touched the lives of a lot of people. He has brought joy. His smile. I mean, his behavior, his demeanor. I'm sorry. I know it's. I know it's hard. Take your time. Believe he's alive can, out there. Yeah, I, I know you, you. Sorry. Go ahead. Just needs to be found. He he needs to know that there are people in here, and I wish he would have told me. I wish he would have told me what was going on. Cause I wouldn't have let him go back there. He might have been afraid to tell you because of what might have happened to him if he did. Uh, you know, this is a man. You know, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna table the comment I was about to make. Let me let me switch gears just a little bit, and I'm gonna ask you a question. Uh, and there's a reason. There's two reasons I'm asking you this question, and it's something that we've talked about. So, in a previous interview, not with you, it was asked what medications Sebastian was on. And I'm going to ask you that right now, not to be nosy, but so that people can know. And there's two parts to this question. What medications were was he on? And what does it mean if he does not have them right now? He was on some medication for impulse control for, for ADHD. He wasn't on anything for his autism. And uh, he had two different types of medication they was taking. And I want to say they just switched it. But I want to say it was like guafa said or something that he was taking. And then he was taking another medication as well. And I, I can't remember the name of that. And they just put him on Rispidonian or however you want to pronounce it. Try to get him to sleep at night. I didn't have a problem with him sleeping here. So I, I never really understood that. I mean, I'm not a doctor, but he just turned around and they, they removed his his tonsils because he, he had obstructive, he had obstructive uh, sleep apnea. So they were trying to, you know, they were trying to get him to quote unquote sleep. But I remember as an infant, my son, and a newborn infant sleeps like 18 hours a day. My son slept maybe four hours. He's always been one that does not sleep, you know, that gets there's just medication doesn't always solve all the problems. Sometimes I think parents use medication against their kids because they just don't want to deal with it. I was, I literally, I only worked part time until my divorce because I spent most of my time taking care of Sebastian. He, he's not perfect. Nobody is. But that doesn't mean he's a horrible person. It doesn't mean he was a horrible child. Had him set with a routine. I could get him to take a shower, eat, take a shower, lay down in bed, and he'd fall asleep in about an hour at the most. And we're talking about at like five, six years old. It was all about a routine. And there's. As soon as as soon as we got it, as soon as she did, as soon as she filed for a divorce, 
first thing she did was was take him to get him get him medicated it's, now not only is the child going through a divorce because the children suffer the most through a divorce because at some point in time they're going to be asked to choose sides and that is horrible to make a child choose between their mother and their father i, I could never do that to my son i was i was good with joint physical joint legal custody because i believe that a child needs both his mother and his father when she started putting him on medication after medication you know this isn't doing enough this isn't this isn't doing what i'm wanting he's not going to sleep he's bouncing over well take him out take him swimming take him to the park and let him play he's damn, he's a child he, he's got to have a, a way to get rid of all this energy you can't just you know go to work and then come home and expect him to you know do what you want him to do He's got to have an outlet for this stuff. He's growing. And medication isn't always, you know, he's, it was just an uphill struggle. The next, so with medication, I want to say this too, with what you're talking about. I get that. My, um, I am very ADHD and a lot of the medications that they can put you on for that will really just make you an absolute zombie. Yeah. Your personality, it, it kills, it kills who they are as a person until they're off of it, obviously. Um, now it was report. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. What are you happy is with this snake? And I'm putting the pictures up because I want people to be able to see what he looks like because the more pictures, the better. So if you see him somewhere, you can recognize him. You get a lot of different ones. So, um, you know, he's he's a cute kid. He seems like a sweet kid. And, and, you know, no kid is perfect, right? Like none of them are. But that's what you're there as a parent for is to help them, you know, get there and, and grow into that that adult. Um the, I want to ask about the glasses. Uh, well, a couple things. One of them I'm going to clarify for anybody who's watching now. Uh, glasses were found during the search for him, and I think it's safe to say now that you were the one that found them. Correct? It was one of my search teams. I wasn't the actual person to okay. find. It was one of our one of my volunteer search search groups. Okay. They if I understand correctly, oh, sorry. Go ahead. And my understanding is those glasses were not his is that what they determined that's what they well everybody knew that off of the internet before i did so yeah okay okay um does did he there was originally reported that he did not have his glasses do you know if is that a true statement is he without them my understanding he has his glasses okay okay that's good. that th that's why when they said they found a pair of glasses and they sent me a picture of them, I was like, that is too close for me to tell. Go ahead. And they told me that nobody was picking up the phone. And so I reached out. I wasn't able to get a hold of anybody. So I flagged down a deputy sheriff and kept him at the volunteer place. And I told them to bring it on, said, told him, put on gloves take pictures around them, how they're laying, so on, you know, take pictures and put on a pair of gloves and bag them and bring them in. Do not touch them. Don't get any DNA transfer or anything like that. And they did. They brought them in so that we could have an exchange and we could have an, a, a, a chain of evidence. Uh, there was something that you said earlier that you were talking about and i kind of want to and you and i talked about this a little bit on the phone and and i like i said we don't want to talk too much about you know your ex and 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 that side of this uh but there is something that i did want to bring up because information about you and your divorce with her with katie was leaked um and some of the stuff has taken the internet to put a lot of accusations against you and you and i have told told the story 
or told me the story of what happened. And I want you to kind of share what you're comfortable sharing. But what, what I found that was kind of odd between the accusations that are being thrown out about you um, through your divorce is that those stories are oddly similar, very similar, in fact, to the stories told by Chris when he was basically bragging about the way he he treated um, Sebastian, the way that Nina Gomez, her children were treated and she was treated. It's oddly like it almost mirrors it exactly. And so respectfully, what I'd like to ask you, is there anything regarding those accusations that you would want to address? I mean, she filed for a divorce. She accused me of uh, domestic violence against my son. Uh, took several months. I ended up, when she filed uh, for a divorce, uh, me being the person I am, I was like, okay, we'll grab a legal pad and let's go ahead and do a divorce. We'll go ahead and split all the furniture and whatnot. What do you want? You know, obviously, things of that sort. And I was like, when it comes down to Sebastian, all I want is 50-50. He's my son. You're his mom. You know, so... And when that part came up, she went and got an attorney. And the next thing I know, I'm being issued a restraining order for domestic violence and a move-out order so that I would no longer have a place to stay as well. Um, I thought it... Initially, I thought it was her that I was being accused of of being violent against. Um, She told them that I had an arsenal. They showed up with like 20 uh, sheriffs in SWAT gear, armed with assault rifles, uh, fully automatic in California. They walked up. I looked at the lady and I was like, uh, you're coming in here. Who, who are y'all here for? Cause I was outside with my son and he was playing with the neighbor's kid and we're sitting there, you know, drinking coffee, shooting the shit, watching our kids play when they rolled up. And when they rolled up, he looked at me, he was like, I wonder who they're here for this time. And I was like, you know, one day they're going to be here for me. Cause Katie's going to call them on me. And that was, the time that they were there for me they rolled up the lady that was in charge she 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 told me that why i was here why they were there and i was like okay i looked at her and i was like you don't remember me do you and the lady looked at me she was like no and i was like i'm the father of the autistic special needs child and she was like oh i remember you and turned around and told l all the deputies there that they needed to stand down, I'd comply with whatever, with whatever was asked. And they were like, they stood down. There there was no need for it, all that. Um, you know, that time I was, was before she did this, I was an armed security officer, worked in military housing. And they were like, we hear you have firearms inside. I was like, yeah, I have my pistol that I use when i'm at work and then i have the other pistol that is used for work because work issues your own pistol and then i had my own and they're like where are they and i told them they were on my desk and they were like but you have a child why do you have them on your desk i was like they're on my desk you can go get them uh 30 minutes later they asked me to come and point out where they were on my desk and i walked in and i showed them the secret little pop so that they would drop down so you could actually get them. And they took those and I still never got my firearms back. because That's California. But that was it. So I was hit with this. I turned around. I was living in my car trying to make ends meet, trying to make sure I had money to feed myself, which was, yeah, it was kind of hard to actually get employment because I didn't even have a residence or an address anymore. Dealing with the court issue. Finally turned around and her attorney kept pushing and pushing. And the judge at one point in time just turned around and told both me and Katie that we needed to be adults 
and remember that we're parents for Sebastian and told us to go in the hallway and do a parenting plan and dismissed everything. CPS had done their investigation. Finally, CPS never contacted me. One day I went by there just out of the whim. It was the last day they were closing the case. And they informed me they've been trying to get a hold of me for the whole time. And I was like, well, my number hasn't changed in years, like 12. And they were like, well, nobody had your information. And I was like, well, his mother did. And she didn't even bother to give him that. They turned around and they were like, well, we can't find any evidence of any abuse. And so they submitted that to the court. And the court dismissed everything. So one thing, hold on, let me try to get this better. So we're we're even sized. There we go. Um, one thing that I want to say to the people with this is, you know, oftentimes you you want to you want to make sure that you believe victims ninety eight percent of the time uh, when they accuse somebody of something. But there are situations where you you can tell that things aren't truthful. I, I will tell you that I, I have talked to, to Seth at length about some of this stuff, and I truly and I would say this even if he wasn't here, believe him. Um, because I think there's a couple reasons why is you can tell the way that he shares his story and you can also tell in his actions, which is the fact that he is out there literally every single day. The other thing that I want to share with you guys from a, just a real quick personal note, um, is that there are women like that who will use their children, fathers too, but there are women out there who will use their children as pawns, as control in a divorce situation. My mom was one of those. She had my dad arrested in front of me multiple times by violating some BS contempt of court thing. It just sometimes happens. And I think that that's what he got caught up in. And I truly do believe that because this is a man who has been like, y'all every single day and nobody has a bad thing to say about him so i just wanted to clear that up because i know that there's been the internet guys can be cruel y'all know that and so i wanted him to kind of clear some of that stuff up um there are some questions that have come in i want to ask you real quick um for the people who who are wanting me to share a couple things with you uh before we kind of go on so the first one is uh but we'll know how he how is he with strangers? Do you think that he would just leave with one if one approached him? Just no, I don't think he would leave with one because he's apprehensive. I, I mean, taught him to be aware of your your surroundings is what I was teaching him. But I've also taught him that not everybody is your friend. And I had to do that. There was an incident in California before before. <laughs> Before Chris and Katie came back here, there was another CPS incident in California at her house. Katie let... Katie and Chris let a, a child into their house that was five years older than my son. My son was seven or eight at the time, and this kid was 13. And... She has a habit of not checking on her kid. I would never let some kid that's five years older than my son play with my, my son anyways. It's like, why do you want to play with my son? There's a five-year difference. That's a pretty big difference. You're 13, and my son, you're, you're a teenager. My son is not a teenager. He He's still playing with Hot Wheels and Legos and, you know... He's building things. He's playing video games. And you're a teenager. You go out and you have your own, you know, age-appropriate group that you play with. And they were letting this kid play with my son. And they weren't checking on him. And then this kid took my son's innocence. And he molested him.
So you take your time. And there was nothing I could do in California because the kid was 13. But they let that happen. And they didn't bother to try to even get my son help until last year. Here, my son has just turned 15 in December. It means he's been dealing with an emotional, stressful, traumatic incident for the last seven years. And I, I've been trying to help him. I've been trying to get him help. going to talk to his doctor and telling them what happened and for the doctor to tell me she was like I knew none of this stuff and I'm like really because he's supposed to be seeing a therapist for this and she's like well the, he's not seeing the right type of therapist for this type of trauma care about my son and I just actions speak so much louder than words and there's just no justification for the actions that I have seen from them they're not parents they're not parents at all and I want to know what happened to my son You deserve to know what happened to your son. Every, every bit. And I'm sorry. I, I don't think any of us were aware of, of that. And I am so sorry that number one, that he went through that. And, and two, that as a parent, you know, well, you're going through a parent's worst nightmare, but that's like the second I'm worst nightmare. My son around his daughter, because Chris has turned around into my mother told my mom, your grandson's a pedophile. No, he's not. He's a victim that hasn't got the help that he deserves and that he needs so that he can get over the traumatic incident that has happened to him. That should have never happened underneath their watch to begin with. That's why Chris doesn't want my son around his daughter. Because he's scared that my son is going to do the same thing that was done to him under his watch. And Chris Proudfoot, if you're listening to this, you can't hold that over my head. I told you. You're going to piss me the fuck off. And I don't give a fuck who knows. It's your fault. It's you and your wife's fault. You guys don't deserve to be around kids. You know, um, we I don't know if you listen to it, but I know that you, you're aware of, of of Nina Gomez's video. And and I'm gonna say this based on what I've heard and, and having dealt. So my my account started off as toxic and narcissistic behavior because of the type of parent that I had. Um he doesn't even want his own daughter. It's what I heard. And it's just all about control. And it's about control with Sebastian. That was pretty clear because as I had a lot of step parents more than I want to admit. And most of them would have never disciplined me without talking to the, you know, to a biological parent. They sure as hell wouldn't have hit me. So it's it's for him. I think it, it really is control. And maybe I shouldn't be saying that, but I'm kind of like, I'm with you at this point. Kind of like, you know, fuck it. Because... Everything that has come out, every word that has come out of his mouth, he double talks. He talks out of both sides of his mouth. He can't keep his story straight in one single interview. So I'm I'm fully with you. And I feel that most people who have seen this going down, have seen everything that's happened, watching it because this case has become incredibly public, um, are on your side with us. And we all feel the same way about them. Because the way, you know what, I'm just going to say it. You're out there every day looking. I've said that a million times. And the only reason you're not out looking for your kid is you're not looking for something that's lost is because it's not lost to you. You know right where it is. You know right where he is. 
And that's why, in my opinion, I think I told you that too on the phone. So every day you're out there busting your ass. And I'm going to tell you, he hurt himself. So like when you see the way he stands and stuff like that, this man is in pain. Like he's got the massager right now. I don't think there's better timing for me to bring this up. This man is constantly in pain. He doesn't sleep. He maybe gets 30 minutes to an hour a night tirelessly while the others were literally, I'm just going to say this because I'm pissed off too. Because again, like I said, this is my community. Okay. They were at the Cracker Barrel five minutes from my house on Easter. And then they left town again. They haven't been seen. And I just don't understand that the last time you saw shit like that was with Chris and Roberta Laundry. So I'm just saying. I want to kind of go on to something a little bit different because I, I know that this is taking a massive emotional toll on you. So um, going to the search, can you take us back to the moments leading up to Sebastian's disappearance and what was happening during your lives at that time, um, which led him to what you, whatever you believe, whatever you know, whatever you're able to share, you know, what was going on at that time to, for him to disappear? I talked to him on Thursday. Everything seemed to be normal. I mean, sorry, I'm just, it hurts. I know. It's okay. I know. I know you're hurt emotionally and physically at this point. And if you don't want to answer anything, if something's getting too much for you, you don't have to, you well, don't have to answer it. I'm just trying to focus so I can, so I can answer the questions. That's all. Pain is a is an overwhelming distraction at times. Sebastian was going to school. The whole point of him finishing his first year was he was supposed to come live with me. We were supposed to do a swap where she would have him every other weekend and he would be living with me, going to school. And if she wanted him on his breaks, then she would be able to have him on the breaks. If not, then he would stay with me. I mean, I, I wanted full custody of my son since the divorce. But I, I didn't, it's, I don't believe it's my right to take a child's mother away. You know, that's something that the child would debate or would decide at a later point in time. Only thing I wanted to do was protect him, and Res respectfully, not every not every person who is a mother is a good mother or deserves to be. Makes me feel like shit. You didn't do anything wrong you're still not doing anything wrong. Should have done things different. You wouldn't have been in that situation. I know that me saying this isn't going to help you from beating yourself up. You're going to do that regardless. But look at the situation that you've been dealing with. It's not, you know, you, you're going up against two people who are constantly battling you in every bit with every bit with your son. It's the same thing that Nina was talking about. They battle every step of the way because it's about control. It has nothing to do with love of, of the children. It has to do with control. That That's what it is. So you, how do I put it? Yes, you married her. Yes, you've been having this co-parenting situation for a long time. I have talked to you enough, and I've seen you talk in other interviews enough to know that you are not like that. And when you have somebody who is not like that, it's hard sometimes to grasp the full spectrum of what you're really dealing with. And so you, you can sit there and beat yourself up and say, I could have done this. I should have done this. But you don't know what you don't know. And I don't think you I don't think you truly know what you're dealing with. 
or have been dealing with. Just makes me want to for him harder. It just makes me want to find him faster. In your opinion, and again, this is one of those that I know with an investigation, you can be very limited. So if you can't answer, just say you can't answer. And if you don't want to, I don't, again, I don't want to take too much of a toll on you. Um, but in your opinion, what do you think might have happened to Sebastian? Um, do you have any theories or suspicions about his disappearance that you want, that you're comfortable sharing? If not, that's okay. I'll let you know I have theories and suspicions all day long. All day long, most and, but they're, they're suspicions, you know, can't really back it up because I'm not in charge of the investigation, but it don't make sense. If there's no scent of him leaving the house on a weekend that was 70, 75 degrees, Then he didn't. He didn't walk away from the house. I I think that it's very you know. I you know I'm just gonna say it. I I think it's very obvious he didn't just walk away from the house. If if the story that that's being painted or told to us is true, and he went away, he went out there barefoot. Then there is no way that those bloodhounds would not have picked up a scent leaving that property somewhere, and they didn't. But so there's no way that he. Even something there's concrete. You 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 lose skin cells all the time. You're barefoot. You think you've got socks on. You're gonna lose particles. They're gonna. It, it's just. It, none of this makes sense. None Zero of this sense. makes. Sense. The okay. only thing that would make sense for the dogs not to get a scent is that if he left that house in a vehicle. And didn't walk off like they said. That's the only thing that could make sense. That's the only reason why a dog would not have picked up a scent. Any of the dogs that came out would not have picked up a scent. No cameras picked him up. And there are, in 2024, people, you know, you don't just vanish. No. In 2024, I'll walk outside right now. And you look around and people have at least their porch light on. Something that makes it obvious so that if you're walking around the house, they can see nobody has their yard and their house all blacked out so that cameras can't see shit unless you're fucking hiding something. I, I would agree. And, but even with even in the dark, a lot of these cameras can still pick up. Well, you know. I am law enforcement, and I'm not trying to sit there and point fingers. But you think for one second that the people that lived there did not know where people's cameras were at? They know. And... I, again, you don't have to say anything to what I'm going to say, but I find it odd that she works for ADT and uh, and there's no security. She works for home security. For oh, it was Brinks. Okay, somebody said ADT. I thought it was Brinks, but okay, Brinks. But so same thing though. You work for them, you get free security systems or at least discounted. So I find that I just have found that very. I'll just say odd is what I'll say. Unusual, um, weird. Unusual. Yeah, it's it's strange. So you for a month have, you probably know every inch about Hind of Hendersonville about now and some other areas, Natchez Trace Park, Goodlettsville, Madison, Gallatin, probably Clarksville. And that being said, can you walk us through uh, the efforts that you've made in your search for Sebastian since he went missing? And what has that process been like for you? Tolling. It's, I have been to Drake's Creek Park. I have been across from there. I have walked through water clear up to my ankles. Well, to my calves. I had water up to my ankles in my boots. Uh, my parents has, have helped me search. And this was just, this was just the first week 
Uh, I've been up and down. Happy Hollow, Muddy Hollow, Tear Branch. Um, I've been to the tallest point in Hendersonville. Didn't know that until I spoke to the gentleman that has a house up there. What's I've the tallest been, point in Hendersonville? There is a road that comes off of... What is it? It's new... Long Hollow Pike goes this way. It's the house, the road right next to the the high school. Um, oh, I know where you're talking about. Okay, I was just curious because I had no, I didn't know that was the tallest point in Hendersonville. It's not, so. but if you go up, you make the first left on there. I'm sorry, uh, and you take that around. It actually goes all the way up to the tallest point in Hendersonville. At least that's what the gentleman told me. That was outside of his house. He was there waiting on his wife to come back because he had locked himself out of the house. But um, he told me that he had been following it and he's been, he had been looking around. And that was, I think that was on the Wednesday after he went missing. But I've been, I mean, I lost my ver voice the first week just driving around screaming my son's name. If he was in that area, he would have heard me. I have a pretty loud voice. It's. And then. Going back to everything. Because now we're starting to research every place that we've been. Because. I think he's alive and I think somebody has him and I think they're moving him around. Trying to stay away from wherever I'm searching. See how I've got people that want to follow me around, follow my volunteers around. They want to go in there a couple days after we've been there. We've gone back to places that we've put out flyers three days later, and there's no flyers there anymore. They're literally ripping our flyers down and getting rid of them. Somebody doesn't want me to find my son. That's it's not motivation to make me stop. You guys, you can't threaten me and make me stop. You might be able to stop volunteers from showing up because you're threatening people. But this is my heart that's out here missing, and I have to find it. I have to find the rest of me. And you guys ain't going to make uh, me stop. The, the one thing I think, so there are people that, that have been following him that have been trying to interfere with the search. And the the level the level of audacity he he is a corrections officer who works you know in a prison with some of the worst of the worst. You're not going to intimidate this man. You're not. You know what kind of support? Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say I do with work with maximum security, but. I guess some of them are the worst of the worst, but they're still human. They're still human too. They they they're they're there to to pay for their crime that they've done. All right. But I'll tell you what. Even criminals have have a have an issue with with people that hurt kids. All right. Absolutely. So do gangsters. So does the mob. So does the, everybody normally, you know, you don't mess, you don't mess with kids. You don't mess with kids and you've messed with a kid that is autistic. And the worst thing is, is that you mess with mine and I won't stop. I'm not going to stop. You can't make me stop. You can't, you can't, you can't threaten me and make me stop. It, it, it's not going to work. Get over yourself. You ain't that important. And I'm talking to whoever's got my kid, whoever's wanting to follow my volunteers around. You're pathetic. And you're a coward. Well, I can tell you, you're not going to stop volunteers in this area. This community wants to try to find, wants to try to find him. And we're not scared. It's a good community. 
Uh, what kind of support would you say you've received from the community, from authorities, from organizations during the search for Sebastian? A lot of the uh, I've, I've I've received a lot of support from everybody. Everybody that comes out to help search for my son, every business owner that allows me to put my son's flyer in their window, property owners that I get a hold of and I call up and they they literally drive over to where their property is and unlock it and let us come in come in and search. I, I mean it's it's extraordinary. And I appreciate that 100%. When I call you up and I ask if I could go on your property, I'm not accusing you. I'm just asking because this is private property. It's yours. And the only thing I can do is ask you if it's okay if I come on it to search for my son. And I appreciate those that say yes. Those that they know. It's your prerogative to say no, but why would you try to stop me from finding my son? You know, I'm not asking you let me search this on my own. You can walk with me. You can come with me. Help me find my son. That has been my plea the whole time. I need people to come help me find my son. Heads up, eyes open. He could be around the next corner. So I know that we've we've talked about this toward the beginning of this. For people who are local, who want to come help, who want to come bring eyes to this with you, because uh, there's somebody in here who just a second ago said that you know they're they're a preacher um, in Gallatin, and he I'm sure he can get the congregation things like that going on. How where is the best place to find where y'all are searching? How to get there? How to get in touch with the people who are organizing that? Um, what's the best way for that? That's going to be my first question in regard to that. We're meeting at one. We're, we meet there every morning at around nine thirty, at uh, the rudder, at the parking lot, and the, at the rudder. That's where we meet. We hand out flyers to get out pe people flyers. We have everybody sign in. The only reason we have people sign in is so that at the end, we know how many volunteers we had, so we can do a head count. So we we're not missing anybody because the last thing we want is somebody to go missing while we're searching for my son. I don't want anybody hurt or injured. You know, if you don't feel comfortable doing something, open your mouth and say it. You know, I try to split people up so that, you know, they have equity protection. There are people that literally are armed with my people. If somebody local to wanted to get a flyer to hang like a business owner in their window, or I've, you know, obviously there's the yard signs around who would, what, who would people contact to get that? Do you know? If you're trying to print it out yourself, you can always go on the TBI website and print it out. If you're wanting if you're wanting flyers so that you can put them up so that your customers, your patrons can grab a flyer when they come in, swing by. I got stacks of them. UNC left me 10,000 flyers and we will go through them. TBI has told me that they will print out more flyers for me. I asked for 6,000 the last time I spoke to them. They were kind of like, really? And I'm kind of like, I'll take all you can give me. because. My, I'm not going to stop. I got people tearing down flyers and, and taking them out. and So I got to replace those too. It just means I have to double my efforts more than they already are. And what about the yard signs that we see? Do you know where those are at? From my understanding, there is a gentleman by the name of Rip Wheeler that has those. I, I can find his information. Okay, I can always I can always update people with that, but I know that I'd like to I, I'll put one in my yard. I'm happy to do that. I've, there's one actually right at the corner of my neighborhood, um, and I'm happy to pass out some flyers and some stuff too, and 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 be out there again to help help you search. Uh, so I'm glad that you've gotten good good support from everybody, and I'm putting the address up for everyone. Uh, if you want to go help search, if you are local, look, you don't have to come out for the full day. You know, lend some time, a couple hours. 
it's, you know, if you had, if you have 10 people lend an hour, that's 10 hours, you know, that's what they need. They need eyes. That's the most important thing in these searches. If you were here yesterday, listening to Kayla Paris's parents, that's what they need too. eyes. That's, that's what, that's what Seth needs. You know, on your way to work, you know, if you're an Uber driver and you're dropping people off, if you're a Pizza Hut delivery person or Papa John's or Domino's, you're delivering food, you're you're going everywhere. Just if you're a delivery person, period, you you get out to more places. UPS drivers, you know, FedEx drivers, anybody that's out there on the road, including law enforcement, if you're out there, I need your eyes open. Please look for my son. So I'm going to ask you kind of a tough question. And again, you don't have to answer because I know, I know this is taking an emotional toll on you. And I know this question is going to be kind of like that, but I, there's the reason I'm asking it is I think that one thing that I have to remind people when you, when you, when you're looking at true crime, current events, things like that, that, that this is not entertainment. This is somebody's life. This is somebody's family. This is somebody's child. And, and I sometimes feel that that can get lost in the shuffle. So for whatever you're comfortable doing, saying, how have you been coping with the emotional toll of his disappearance? How's it affected your life, your routine? Um, I know you told me a story about your house. I don't have a life. When... My life was a was a every other weekend or a summer break or a spring break or a fall break. That's when I had life. My life stopped when I dropped my son off at his mother's house. Then I would just work. My life began again when I picked him up on my next following Friday. I worked before I went into law enforcement. I was working at Allied. And I told them, listen, every other weekend, I need off. I, I was like, I will work 12 days in a row, but you have to give me my weekend, my every other weekend off. Don't call me to work. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to do it. This is, I will work all these days so I can have my Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with my son. That's it. My life revolved around my son. And since my son has gone missing, my life is, I don't have one. Because my life is missing. My son is missing. My mom told me I need to clean my house. Then I'll help me. I can't clean my house. I can't really clean my house. I clean my kitchen. I run my dishwasher. Can't go into my son's room. He's not in there. I don't want to clean up my living room because there's magic cards all over my table. When he comes in, and I want it to still be the same way like he hasn't left. That way, he, when he walks into my house, he knows that he's back in his sanctuary. Routine? I don't have a routine. Let's just try to sleep every once in a while. I'll be driving and I just pull over because I get so tired I can't even focus on the road. I just pull over, give me like 30 minutes worth of sleep and then hit the road again. There is no stop. There is no downtime. There's nothing. There's nothing but the goal of finding Sebastian. Regarding um, the search and, and, and efforts and ongoing, is there anything else regarding that that you'd like to share with the people that are listening or anything else in general you want to share with the people that are listening? Not really. I mean, I'm giving this all I got. I know. Until there's nothing left to give. And then I'll give some more. I'll find more to give.
so like I said, as you can see, this this man needs help. He needs help. So again, if you are local, I know that there are a lot of local people watching this. I know that this was shared in the groups. I've said this a couple of times. Please go out and search, even if you can only do it for an hour, 30 minutes, whatever. If you can't, the Cash App scrolling across the bottom of this, um, the TMB Fleming, that's, that is Seth's friend who is managing this stuff for him because when I tell you all this man does is search for his kid, that is literally all he does. That's all he does. He might get 30 minutes of sleep every now and then. He eats enough to kind of keep going on. Um, so he has people that are helping him with this. And like I said, searching can be, can be expensive. Um, so, so please do help. And if you can't help with your eyes, help monetarily help, sh you know, sharing, even if you aren't in the area, sh you know, like he said, you can go to the TBI's website, download Sebastian's flyer. Um, you can plaster it all over your social media because optics are everything in, in cases like this. Um, there's a couple of questions in the chat that I, I've gotten a lot that I want to ask. And again, you can answer whatever you don't want to answer. Um, but a lot of questions, and I know that this is going to come up in the coming days because it's already been. So that's why I'm asking it is in regard to the clothes that he was wearing to Texas Roadhouse. Do you know if police have it? Do you know if they're accounted for anything like I, that? Or are you not even allowed to say? I don't. I have no idea. I mean, we're talking about. I was in that house for for on and off for three days before it became a hostile situation. But I didn't get to see that video of Texas Roadhouse for over a month before they showed me that video. So I can't even tell you if what clothes were there. That would be something that the investigators would have to actually look for. Okay. I know people asked and I wanted to make sure that, you know, they heard it from you. So the goal with this is to make sure that we quell rumors around it, because really when you're searching for somebody, um, you want to make sure that the truth is what's out there and the truth people have and, and getting it straight from you, you know, is, is helpful in that situation. Um, one thing that, that I want to address, I want to be very cognizant of your time because I know you're, I know you're mentally and physically exhausted. Um, but this is something that I'm going to say on my own. Um, because again, I, I'm on these apps. I see comments that are made. I see what people say about people. And, you know, people can be very cruel on the internet. Um, with some of some of Seth's interviews, people have tried to judge his his body language, the way he holds his hands over his head or whatever. I'm telling you, think about how you would be, how you would feel if you have been on your feet with limited sleep, limited food, an emotional. A, not even a roller coaster, just an emotional dive. Plus, you injure yourself while searching. Just kind of think about that before people start giving any accusations about him. Because I can tell you, everybody, I have talked to him a good bit, especially in the last few days. A lot of creators that that I know who he's talked to, Pascal, um, you know, others that he he's been with, and who he's talked to we can all tell you that this, this man is incredibly genuine. And the only thing he wants in the world is to find his kid. He has good reason to believe that Sebastian is still alive. So the important thing to do is, is find him because, you know, in these situations, time is always of the essence. And I feel, I feel personally without you having to say this is that once I think how I want to word this carefully, once they scaled back the search, it felt like there was no more search except for what you were doing. Even with the search, when it was heavy, they didn't take, I know that they took your phone and they took Katie's phone for a long period of time. I know Chris got his phone back within a matter of hours. I know that they came in and searched the house for a couple of times. When I say searched the house, I mean, they came in and, and looked, but there's not been anything done from my understanding. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, forensically. And I, I just, yeah, so I just feel that there's a lot more that can be done. I believe in the power of social media. We've, we've seen what social media can do in a lot of different cases. And 
I'm probably going to not be people's favorite person when I say this, but get on law enforcement, guys. Call the Sumner County Sheriff's. Start asking some of these questions. Ask them why. Because, you know, you could bring Luminol in and see if there was, you know, any injuries. You could see possibly, you know, where he went out. You know, you go back to the Idaho. They were able to get a partial footprint based on this. And he had only been in the house from what we know of one time, maybe a couple. I'm just saying that there's a lot that can be done that I don't think has been done. And this boils down to being more than more than just theft and a bunch of volunteers looking you need law enforcement on this and it's been very frustrating in tennessee to see how law enforcement has been in some of these cases and and you know maybe i'll give them the benefit of the doubt and say that maybe they're not communicating everything because they do know stuff that we don't know um you know they they know stuff that we don't know they don't where the public's not entitled to everything but i would hope that as a parent they would at least bring seth in on some of that and you don't have to say anything like that i'm just saying that Um, I know that I've had you for about an hour and I know that you're exhausted. So be before we wrap this up and I let you go, is there anything else that you want to talk about or, or convey to people, anything else at all? I appreciate the help people. I really do. Uh, I mean, I know Sumner County doesn't like me. I know that they're, that the, <laughs> I'm pretty sure the sheriff's office is tired of me, but I don't care. This is my son. I want to step on people's toes. I'm getting to that point where I'm just fed up. I'm fed up with no answers. I'm fed up with I, I'm I'm law enforcement. But I'm an amateur because I'm not an investigator. And I'm seeing things that should have been done and haven't been done. And it's just giving, it's, it's leading to more answers. I sh I'm sorry. It's leading to more questions that don't have answers because things weren't done like that. More questions and more questions. And I haven't shared everything that I know, but the no, investigation. I know you can't share everything you know. You can't. I can't because some of that stuff that I know that have been through leads that I've gotten, I want to share. But Sebastian deserves justice, not vengeance. My son's going to have justice. And we're going to find him alive. Because if you've hurt my he, son, I feel sorry for you. Yeah, I wouldn't want to cross you either in that way. Um, there's a couple things that, that I wanted to make sure that we brought up before we closed out too. Um, one, I'm going to put this here first. So if you want to add... I'm going to stop scrolling for just a moment here on the bottom. But if you want to add to Sebastian's reward fund, what's the reward up to currently, Seth? Absolutely. You know? Don't don't add anything to it currently because you don't I, add anything to it. No, I've got some information, and I need to I need to go down there and have a talk with that gentleman. Okay. So never mind. Don't do that. <laughs> Uh, thank you for sharing that. The other thing that I want to make sure that I share with y'all, and I, I know this has been scrolling at the bottom as well. If you'd like to go, is it, let me see if we get there we go. If you'd like to go purchase this, you can go to bonfire.com slash Sebastian hyphen Rogers. Um, this makes you a walking billboard for him. You can get it in all different colors. It's only $35, which I can tell you it, it's print on demand for for print on demand, that is cheap. You can get it in a sweatshirt, a t-shirt, a hoodie, women's slimming. There's all sorts of different options that you have, all sorts of different sizes. Uh, and do any the, the proceeds for this, does this any of this go towards towards you once you get it um, or towards the search? It was supposed you know to. 
I haven't seen anything from it. Okay. Well, you, you can know, get it on your own then, and yeah, it's a walking I, billboard at least. Yeah, there, there's actually on the Facebook page, there's a lady up here in Clarksville. I think she's charging like $25 for a shirt. Um, I can get that information and give it to you. Yeah, if you get that, I'll I'll happily post that. And you know, we can do that. I mean, I'd rather it stay in the community, if not in the community, at least in my community. You know, if not Sumner County, then at least in Clarksville, in Montgomery County, because she has a job. And if we can bring income to her job, then it's the, you know, it stays instead of sending out to somewhere else. Nothing against the company or whatnot, but really don't know them. Somebody asked me to design it, and uh, they asked me permission. I told them, go ahead. And then this lady saw them, and she runs a print shop up here in Clarksville. And she's the one that made this one for me. So... The next thing, and then there's going to be two more things that we, we close on that I want to talk about regarding um, something that you told me about Nancy Grace tonight as well that we, I forgot to say at the beginning, so I want to make people know that you're doing it. But before we do, let me show you this too. So a lot of y'all have been asking about a cash app, GoFundMe, et cetera. There is a GoFundMe, and, and I talked to him about the GoFundMe. Um, and look, GoFundMe's take 50%. So then I said, do you have a cash app? And he doesn't really manage that himself. He'll, he'll tell you that. He'll tell you that right now. Um, but his friend is helping him with it. So if you want to cash app him, there you go. It's been scrolling across the, the thing the whole time. If you want to take your phone out and snap that or, or screenshot that so that you can you can cash app. Um, you know, Seth, you can you can tell them that that money goes to you. Um, that goes to the search that goes to, to help him. So a lot of y'all are asking what you can do financially. So that's that's the way to do it. Yeah. Now, was... I'll leave... Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. So the other things I want to talk about, I'm going to leave this up while we do. Um, at the beginning of this, we talked about the fact that, or I talked about the fact that Chris said, or maybe I forgot to talk about it, but Chris said that he was going to take a lie, a lie detector test, a polygraph. He had said if I recall on a previous interview that he had already taken one. Then when Nancy Grace asked him, he said he hadn't taken one. And Nancy said, if I set one up, will you take one? And he said he would. So Nancy Grace sets up the polygraph. And Chris gives the excuse that he can't take it because of the TBI. Literally have never heard that excuse ever. Because it would have nothing to do with that. However... Seth is also taking a polygraph that Nancy Grace is setting up, and you're doing it on Wednesday? Uh, yeah, she asked me if I would take one, because I haven't had one yet. And I told her, sure. And they turned around and called me back earlier today, and they're setting it up for next Wednesday. So I want to just kind of point that out, that he, this man yeah. has nothing to hide. I'm sorry, say again? I said, yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, he's got nothing to hide. And if the TBI tells me that I can't take it, they need to put it in writing so I can show it to everybody. I have but a feeling the TBI isn't going to give a shit if you take the polygraph. I'm pretty sure um, that they won't. I don't care. I don't. I don't have anything to hide. So why? Why? Why would I? Why would I? I don't want to hide behind HIPAA. You know. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Um, I want to, somebody just said something, made a, an offer for you, and I know that you're searching, but I'm going to pin this up. And if you're interested, you can tell me and I can get you two together. But that, if you can read what's on the screen, somebody who has a spa in Hendersonville, which I think is very, very generous of you. In fact, I want your information then as well, because if you're willing to do that, I want to support your business. But it might be behoove you with what you, you've done to yourself. Um, to maybe take 30 minutes to an hour and take advantage of this. If you want it, I, I can, I can get with this, this person um, and I can get you with them and we can get everything set up. So you can let me know. 
but I think that it would be, it would be really beneficial for you because you, you and I both know, okay, look, we're not, we're not young anymore, Seth. We, We don't heal like we used to heal. And you know that if you keep going the way that you're going, you're going to make it so you can't go at all anymore. Speak for yourself. I'm still young. <laughs> all right. I, 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 I put stuff in my goatee to make it look all gray and everything. Okay. Is that what you do? Because I put stuff in mine to get rid of the gray and I didn't do a good job tonight. So yeah, it's, I think it's called stress, but it's cool. You know, I find my stress. I can get rid of some of that stress. A lot of it when I find him. Okay, well, then let me put it. Then, it, then you will be able to keep going because you heal miraculously, but it will still help your shoulder. Is that better? That's better. <laughs> um, before before we uh, wrap up, and by the way, for that person, uh, if you want to get a hold of me, shoot me an email. My email, I'll, I'll drop it in the chat real quick. It's Justin, J-U-S-T-I-N-S, Justin's on TikTok at gmail.com. Um, and you shoot me an email if you don't mind, and uh, I will... I will happily put you two together so you can, you can help him because this man needs, he need it'll help him greatly. I, I know that. So be, before we wrap up uh, anything else at all that you want to say, this is your opportunity. It's your, your platform. Thank everybody for showing up. And I think all those that will show up and I just need people to keep your head up and your eyes open. He's out there. We're going to find him. Sebastian's army is going to find him. And you're going to see me in a couple days out on another search with you. Maybe tomorrow or Friday. Yeah. um, I'm still waiting on information because I've been informed that if my search groups are out there to stay away from law enforcement search area because supposedly they're going to arrest anybody that they catch in those areas searching. So I don't know if this is true or fact or hearsay, but I'll find out. Let us know and I will make sure to, um, if, that's the tr- if that's the case, I will happily blast that information out there. Um. Because why you would stop people from searching? Because I again, I've been out there. Nobody has gone on this search and has been anything but respectful that I've seen of people's property, of people's time. So why some why they would want to impede searching for a kid? Well, is, they're they're we, we use the word odd. That. Do I say again? Sorry, I said I think we used the word odd earlier, but um, sorry, what'd you say? I interrupted you. When law enforcement is doing a search, they do grid searches and stuff like that. I could see that they don't want any interference from people who are not trained. Okay. They don't want anybody stepping on evidence or anything of that sort. So believe me, I, I, I try to find out where they're at so that I'm not having any of my volunteers coming across them. So... If you are out volunteering and you are handing out flyers and you see them, kindly just turn around and walk the other direction. Because I don't, we don't need to be spending money on bail. Okay. Yeah, I I, I would agree with that. So I guess if you are going to search, don't do it. With that being said, don't do that on your own. Just meet at the rudder. At 9.30 or, you know, if, if people were to get there a little bit later, are they still able to search? Yeah. They get there after that 9.30 mark? Yeah. So if you can't get there at 9.30, they're doing it between 9.30 and 5. Get there when you can. Again, if you can donate just a couple hours, time, you know, time is free. So, well, I appreciate you coming on and and, and opening up. I know that these interviews take a lot out of you. So, I mean, I, I appreciate it. I, I want to make sure that we get the word out like you do. This is, like I said, this is, this is my community. And, and the one, last thing I'm going to say on this is what I'm very frustrated with as far as communication goes, and this has nothing to do with you, is that one of two things is going on here. Either in our community, the community that I live in, where I have a child in this community, either there's a child abductor out there 
and they have not reassured the community that we're safe or they don't believe that there's a risk to the entire community and there's a reason for that. Those are the only two options that you have here. But being the fact that I am a member of this community, I live in this county, um, it would be nice for them to give us an update on what they think on that. And that's what I'll say for that. So Seth, I appreciate your time. Um, try to get some rest and, and that when that person messages me, I'll, I'll put you in contact with them. And, and I hope that you take advantage of the massage. And the other thing, which I know I have beaten this horse to death with you. I know that, but I'm going to say it again anyways. Please call Joe Petito. Will do. I'll do that. Too. Okay. Well, have a great night. Thank you for coming on. And um, you and I will talk soon. Yes, sir. I right, have a good one. Thank you, everybody.